Good morning, all. You know, I usually take for granted the observation that actions speak louder than words. But for just a few moments here this morning, I'd like to emphasize that words are important. And in fact, sometimes words are actions. You know, in Genesis, God makes things not by thinking them into being, and not by making them with his hands. God makes things by saying them into being. Let there be light. Let the earth bring forth vegetation. Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and so on. And St. John begins his gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. Eskimos, we are told, have nine different nouns for snow. We have to modify snow with adjectives to create different meanings. Wet snow, dry snow, big flakes. We're also aware that there are some things that languages can do that help us create meaning. And perhaps they create our thought. So, for example, in Spanish, the word amigo refers to a friend who is female. The English equivalent, girlfriend, is freighted with other meanings. And we often have to use clumsy workarounds such as, well, this is just a friend or this is my friend who is a girl to make clear our relationship. Well, today, as we celebrate the 811th anniversary of Pope Innocent III's recognition of the Order of the Most Holy Trinity, I want to think about the word love. We often use love indiscriminately. And we'll say things like, I love that movie or that song. Or, I love my dog or my favorite team. Or, I love that video game or that car. Or I have my bike or my favorite player. I love the smell of cookies baking, the taste of my favorite food. I love my parents and my family and my girlfriend. But we can't love all these things the same way. The Greeks had four words to help distinguish between these various loves. For a kind of natural affection, they used the word storge. For friendship, they used philos. For passion or desire, they used eros. And for a divine kind of love that allows us to love what is not naturally lovable, the hungry, the poor, the prisoner, the stranger, they use the word caritas. You can teach yourself to remember these four versions of love by using the mnemonic device SPEC. Right? Storge, philos, eros, caritas. Two of these loves, storge, or affection, and eros, that's passion, are natural loves. We're drawn to them. We don't have to do any work at all to have those. But philos, friendship, and caritas, the divine love, those are willed laws. That is, we make a conscious decision to practice them. The Trinitarians, it seems to me, are experts in these four laws, and they're particular specialists in caritas. Inside and outside their community, they practice storge, or affection. They live in community with their brothers, and they also live with us, and so they model for us philos, brotherly love. They bring passion to all that they do. And they have, throughout their history, embodied the divine love of Caritas. Think about the readings for today. And remember, these are always the readings for St. John the Mathaday, because they are particular to the Trinitarians. In the second reading, John told us we should love one another, and that the man who does not love is among the living dead. I do not ordinarily think of the Bible and zombies in the same moment. But John's description of the man who does not love as being living dead seems an accurate description of the zombie who crashes through life without regard for others, who is not fully alive, and yet persists in feeding on others. The love that the Trinitarians practice is to see God in each one of us, especially the hungry, the prisoner, the outcast, the impoverished, the homeless. And I hope the gift of our school is to help all of us to see God in each other so that we may continue to do the work of the Trinitarians. Bernard of Metz helped ransom nearly 900 captives from 1572 to 1580, all the while writing numerous books, including the first book ever written about the ransoming of captives. Pedro de Cavaccio sailed with the explorer Vasco da Gama. He died as a martyr. Geronimo of St. Felix was a professor of theology and philosophy in the 19th century. His dedication to helping the poor was legendary. Trinitarians like the great Father Robert Gauguin freed dozens of slaves, wrote books that inspired others. 
Project Terry and Lucier trained hundreds of Trinitarians and ransomed numberless captives. Father Bartolome Serrano wrote a book in 1670 describing the conditions of a slave ship that had traveled from the west coast of Africa to the Caribbean and the Americas. His heart-wrenching description of 150 slaves chained neck to neck is one of the first likely in the world, and his despair at not being able to buy those slaves is palpable. Father Serrano later founded five hospitals, four of them in prisons, hospitals that took care of the least of our brothers. The Trinitarians who staffed these hospitals took enormous risks. During times of plague, and there were two huge ones in 1690 and then again in 1740, many Trinitarians died when they stayed in hospitals to serve the sick. Why would they do that? Why would they risk their own lives? Only those who are committed to the four loves would do such a thing. To feel affection, storge, or passion. Eros, well that's natural. But as we said, friendship, or philos, and the divine love of caritas, well those only exist when you commit to doing them. They are the act of the will. And philos and caritas make affection and passion act and serve the greater loves by directing them towards others and not towards serving yourself. By practicing the four laws, by giving these words life, the Trinitarians have made the world a better place. They have loved and served human beings, and through that service they have loved God. Sometimes that service took the form of founding a hospital and then a college to train doctors and staff it, as it did for Father Roque, who did both of those things in North Africa in the 1570s. Sometimes that service took the form of scholarship and dedication to the poor, as it did in the 17th century for Father Stanislaw, who spoke six languages fluently, acted as an interpreter and a diplomat, and was primarily a defender of the poor. And sometimes that service to God takes form in the creation of a high school, in the education of a faculty and staff and students to not only speak the words of love, but to live the words of love. As we ready for the coming of Jesus this Christmas, let's think particularly of the Trinitarians and their commitment to recognizing incarnation, God and the least of us, throughout each day of the year. How fortunate we are to have the examples of Father Damien and Father Burke with us daily and to have Father Ed Owens with us here today. They are reminders to all of us of the four laws, those that come naturally and those that are an act of the will. Please join me in a round of applause to thank them for all the good